morning. Let us stand on our feet and give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Bless your name, Father. Glory, glory. Welcome to Cabaret's Way Ministry. Welcome to Facebook and YouTube partners. The mission of CWM is to make known the gospel of Jesus throughout the entire world and to teach the word of God to the end that those who believe may be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Here at CWM, we are committed to impacting lives on purpose. Amen. I will be reading from you John 10, verses 25 to 30, and it reads, Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. I may have from you John 10, verses 25 through 30. Thank you. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All hearts still. All minds released. Let us go before the Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name this morning, and we thank you for all things. But you are the great I am, and there is none like you, Father God. There will be none after you nor before you, Father. So we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this another day that you've given us to come into the house of the Lord, to give you praise, to give you worship. We glorify you, dear God. We lift you up to the heavens, for you are the most high God. Father, we thank you for those that are here with us in the sanctuary this morning. But, Father, we give you praise for those that are still on their way, Father God. We speak, declare, and decree right now that they have safe passage here, Father God. And we send, send and dispatch their heavenly angels as they guide the highways and the byways, bringing them forward into the house of the Lord, that they may continuously lift you up, dear Lord. Now, Father, we thank you for the man or woman of God that is bringing the word this morning. Father, strengthen them, empower them, that they may pour out into us all that you have for us, Father God. All that you press down into them, Father God, they pour out into us. And as they pour out, Father God, we thank you for a fresh anointing, a fresh renewal, a fresh restoring upon them in the name of Jesus. Because of all your love and kindness, Father God, we want to just continually give you praise. We give you glory for it. We thank you, Father, right now, and we declare and decree that there, if there be anyone among us that is ill in their body or their mind, their heart, in their homes, Father God, we call it blessed, we call them healed, we call them restored, we call them empowered in the name of Jesus, for they are called to impact lives in the name of Jesus. So, Father, right now, we thank you for these and all of the blessings in the name of your most precious Son, Jesus Christ. And we say together, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a praise in the house tonight. Come on and shabbat your God. Hallelujah. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let's exalt his name together. Come on and give him glory. I said, come on and give him glory. Come on and magnify him, lift him higher, hallelujah, because he's worthy of our praise, amen, hallelujah, he's worthy of our worship on this morning, thank you Jesus, we bless the name of the Lord in this house, we lift up his name in this house, we make him big in this house, we lift him above everything in this house, hallelujah, oh God, thank you. Bless the name of the Lord in this house. Y'all ready for worship? How many of you love him today? I said, how many of you love the Lord today? Come on, I want us to pull our minds in and focus. Hallelujah. Because we came for only one purpose, and that's to lift him up today. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, we bless him and we love him forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Jesus. Your mercy and your kindness towards me. Your love is so amazing. It brings me to my peace. Oh, 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 gonna love you forever. Is that your declaration?
love you forever Sing oh Wanna love you Come on, can we say that again? Come on, everybody in the building, come on Forever. One more time, everybody, come on. Cry, oh, oh, oh. yeah, that sounds good. Come on, make that declaration in this atmosphere. Sing, oh, oh, oh. gonna love you forever.
has cried be made fine in this your holy temple in this your holy place we shall rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify you divine oh how we love you oh how we love you oh how we praise God we lift you above every
something in the room I need to know that you're here not just sitting in a pew but I need to know that you're here and you're in worship I need to know that you're here and your reason for being here is to magnify the Lord that you're here because you need something from the Father today hallelujah that is the reason that we are simple together in corporate worship it's because I can draw strength from you. You can draw strength from me. Come on, we can be strengthened together. Come on, somebody give it worship. What you need, come on. My worship is not for you, it's for me. <laughs> what I need from God is for me, it's personal at this moment. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We 
We pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. We pray that the strength of God enter into, into you now. Come on, be strengthened down in your inner man in the name of Jesus. Be strengthened down in your inner man. It's from there. It's from that powder. It's from that place that you draw strength. It's from that place, yes, Lord, that you get what you need. It's from that place. Come on. You've got to dig deep down into your reservoir. You've got to get down into your reservoir. You've got to pull from the word hey, that I'm at, that's already been planted on the inside of you. You've got to pull from that place of worship that's already been set up for you. You can't draw strength from your flesh. You can't draw strength. Come on, you've got to go into the deep places. You've got to tap into realms, yes, Lord. You've got to go places you've never been in the spirit, yes, God. Woo! Woo! Thank you for your presence here today. Thank you, Jesus, that absolutely nothing the enemy meant for bad on today. I canceled that assignment and I decreed that devil, it ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't going to work in my life. It ain't going to work in your lives. Hallelujah. God's purpose and plan for our lives is still yes and amen. It doesn't change. He don't change his mind. He don't change his promises. He don't change the prophetic decrees over your life. Yes, Lord. Only the devil can come and make you think our God ain't going to come through. But we cancel that assignment today. Hallelujah. We seal it in the name of Jesus. And we decree it is so. Come on, somebody say it is so. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and give him a radical praise now. Come on, like you've been strengthened. Praise him like you can go another further. Praise him like you already know what it's going to be on this week. Come on, praise is already gone before you. Judah has already paved the way. Yes, God. We bless you in this house. Thank you. Now, Father, have your way. Continue to have your way in this place. I decrease as you increase. Use me as your oracle on today. Let me not say anything, God, that you have not ordered to flow out of these lips. I'll stay in you, God. I'll flow with you. Thank you, Jesus. Now give your people ears to hear, hearts to receive your word feet to apply what is said. Thank you that your people will go for broke. <laughs> I said thank you that your people will go for broke. No longer holding back. No longer bound by their minds and by the things that they've been entangled with. No more entangled by the enemy. But God, I thank you that liberty and freedom will be in this house on today. In Jesus name. Amen. Come on and give him praise. Get your Bibles. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're doing good. Thank you, Lord. Turn with me to Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 16. Thank 
you, Lord. Chapter 16, starting at verse 7. We're going to read down to verse 10. And it reads, The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from? <laughs> and where do you think you're going? Her response is, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, <laughs> go back. Go back to your mistress and submit to her. Verse 10. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. You may take your seat. Please forgive me for not doing the acknowledgments and following the proper protocol. I do know the protocol. Just got a little caught up, so forgive me. Come on, can we honor God first in this house? This is a God first house. I say this is a God first house. Hallelujah. Come on, can we now give it up for the baddest bishop this side of heaven? Y'all ain't, that sound all right to me. Bishop David A. Swinson, senior. Come on and give it up for the man of God. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give it up for the mothers, Mother Rome, Mother Brown. Hallelujah. In their respective places, all of our elders, Elder Leverett, Elder Bennett, Elder Bryant, Elder E. Sanderson, Elder Wilson. Come on, Elder Green. Can we give it up for our elders? And all of our ministers who are too many to name right now. But I give God praise. Amen. Come on for the media team. Can we give it up for them always. Serving and working so diligently. And give it up for our, men, our minstrels over on the keyboard and the drums. Our deacons, our greeters, and our ushers. Sanctuary workers. And give it up for our babies and all of you that are in your respective places. I feel I need to read my scripture one more time. You don't have to stand for it. But there's power in this scripture. I am still ministering from the subject that Bishop has been so graciously dealing with, the internal conflict. <laughs> and uh, I know that all of us have been impacted at some way by that word. It has caused us to really do some deep searching of ourselves. Some of it don't feel good. Well, for me, none of it feel good. But I acknowledge that that is what God is doing. It's not nobody else causing it. It's not nobody else doing it. I acknowledge that it's God causing me to see me. Amen. Some things we thought we were over. Some things we thought we had already been healed from and we'd have gone on by our way. But I promise you, God has a way to show you. It's still in there. Y'all ain't talking to me today. We can get so busy and so consumed with life that we are not uh, acknowledging the fact that we still have some internal conflict. That there are still some things in us that God is working out. Somebody say, work it out, God. Lord, have mercy. Scripture says, And the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to shore. Sure. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarah, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress 
and submit to her. The angel added, once you do that, once you obey me and you go back and you submit without mumbling and complaining. Oh, y'all ain't talking. I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous for you to count. Internal conflict has been an eye opener. Not only an eye opener, it's been a wound opener. For many of us, it's easier and less painful for us to do like Hagar and run away from the thing that's causing our wounds to be reopened. But thank God for the angels that God placed in our lives and that love us enough to make us go back and fix the problem and not just cover it up. It's time out for trying to put band-aids on open wounds that's oozing. Oh, Lord, y'all. I said it's time out for sticking a band-aid on open wounds that's still oozing. The title of my message today is Stop Trying to Stop the Bleeding and Heal the Wound. We've been trying to stop the bleeding because the bleeding is obvious. <laughs> the bleeding everybody see. Oh, y'all ain't talking. <laughs> the bleeding everybody see. It's bleeding all over you. It's all on your clothes. Every time you try to put a Band-Aid on it, you got to take it off, put another one on. Because the bleeding just won't stop. But you guys, we have been trying so hard to just stop the bleeding so it ain't obvious to nobody that I'm hurting, that I'm broken, that I'm bitter, that I'm in unforgiveness. We trying to stick a band-aid on top of an open wound. Our attitudes, open wounds. Our mouths, open wounds. Our anger, open wounds. Our jealousies, open wounds. Our bitterness and unforgiveness open wounds. But we have been so uh, churchy. We've been church so much that we've been told it's all right for you to shout all over the place, bleed all over the flow. Y'all ain't talking to me. And get up and still your wound has not been attended to. So wound healing is the process that the skin or the injury goes through as it repairs the damages. There are three main types of wound healing depending on treatment and the wound type. These are called primary, secondary, and territory wound healings. Every single wound goes through various stages of healing. depending on the type of wound and the severity. When you understand the severity of your wound, you will know how to take the proper steps required to treat it. The severity of your wound is how you treat other people. The severity of your wound is how you talk to other people. The severity of your wound is how you just bleed out on everybody. Y'all ain't talking. So every time something happens or hit that wound, your response shows you the severity of your wound. How deep are your wounds? If you know anything about the medical field or if you paid any attention to it and how they deal with wound care, you will notice they only cover it up to stop the bleeding in the beginning. But the purpose for covering up is not to heal it. Eventually, they have to take the bandage off. Y'all ain't talking. Because that wound got to have air. It's got to breathe. Lord, have mercy got to breathe. Somebody say it's got to breathe. Somebody say it's time for me to heal for real. The more we try to band-aid things, the longer it takes for the wound to heal. 
Band-aids have their place. But when there is a wound and you want to stop the bleeding, the dressing of that wound properly is also important. The band-aid is only the dressing, but it's not the cure. We've been around here wearing band-aids for years. Thinking that it's curing my wound. When all actuality is stopping the process of my healing. Oh, y'all ain't talking. In the medical field, I found out that in order for the wound to properly heal, it has to be open to air. And in order for it to be open to air, we got to remove the band-aids. Somebody say it's time to remove the band-aids. So in our passage today, we're going to find out several things, all right? The passage concerning Hagar, we're going to find out, first of all, you can't fix a problem creating a bigger one. You can't heal a wound, putting the wrong, uh, uh, doing the, handling it the wrong way or putting the door through the wrong process. Remember now, there's three types. And if you haven't properly assessed which type of wound you have, you will give it the wrong treatment. So in the verses of Genesis, there's a dialogue between Sarah and Abraham in the beginning. Remember, you remember now, the Lord told Sarah and Abraham that, Abram that they were going to have a child. And uh, Sarah, in the beginning, did not believe it. And because the wait was so long, she decided to fix her barrenness with another problem. So she goes in and tells Hagar, listen, it's embarrassing for me not to have children. But I know your womb... It's open. Your wound is able to conceive. So I need you to go in and I need you to sleep with my husband and I need you to conceive and have a child. Y'all with me? A bigger problem. So Sarah felt that the Lord had restrained her or closed up her wound. So for Sarah, that was her internal conflict. Ah! It was her conflict because inside, all she could think about was, I can't have a child. What are they saying about me? How are they looking at me? Right? Because everybody's supposed to be able to conceive. And here I am barren. I prayed to the Lord. I've asked the Lord. I've consulted the Lord. I petitioned the Lord. And still, here I am with this internal conflict. So we find Sarah wanting a child so bad that she conceives. She convinces Abraham and Hagar to sleep together and have a child. Somebody say, but then. But then after she noticed that Hagar was conce had conceived and was with child, her internal conflict begins to show up. And she decides that now I don't want to have nothing to do with you. She kicks her out the house. She pregnant. She with child. The child that you told her to go in there and get. Oh. But now you want to put her out. Oh, okay. She did. You, that's why I say you can't fix a problem with a problem. She caused a bigger problem. All she had to do was wait on God. All she had to do was wait on the promise, but she couldn't wait. So she sends Hagar away, kick her out the house, tell her she don't want around no more. <laughs> but this was the mess she created. That was the first one. The second thing we're going to find says we now discover that because Sarah didn't deal with her open wound her internal conflict the right way her bleeding caused her to inflict pain on somebody else it's quiet Jesus it's quiet I said her internal conflict caused her to inflict pain on somebody else how many times 
have you inflicted pain on somebody else because you're not properly dealing with your internal conflict we do it all the time we do it all the time we, we point the finger all the time we say it's you, it's somebody else all the time when really it's me it's my issue it's my internal conflict it's my wound that I didn't properly tend to So when we don't deal with our wounds and our internal conflict the right way, we continue to inflict, inflict pain on those closest to us and to those that truly love us. Say, ouch, and Lord, I'm sorry. Come on, say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that it was my internal conflict causing me to inflict pain on my family. I didn't realize it was my internal conflict. It was my open, oozing, bleeding wound that was causing me to inflict pain on those close to me and those that I love. Listen, I'm okay long as I'm in the public, but at the house, I'm over here mad as I, yeah, a barrel of rattlesnakes. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm ready to kick everybody. I'm ready to cuss everybody out because I got an internal conflict. Got an internal conflict. The saying that we hear so often that hurt people, hurt people, is really true. But that cycle of us being hurt and hurt hurting other people, it's got to be broken. We got to deal with it. We can't continue laying the blame on everybody else and inflicting pain on everybody else all because we refuse to deal with us I say we refuse to deal with us we refuse to take full responsibility for our own wound what if nobody else came to help you heal it what if nobody else came to put bomb, put, put uh, some balm on it, some stab on it? What if nobody else came to help you dress it properly? What if nobody else came, reminded you that it's now time for you to take the bandage off? It's been seven days already. Now you still around here wearing a wound? How? What if nobody ever came? You the keeper of your own vineyard, remember? It's your responsibility, remember? So, because Sarah's wounded and she only put a band-aid on it, she never addressed the problem for real. So watch what happens next. She sends the handmaiden away, kicks her out the house. So now we find Hagar crying at the spring, trying to figure out what she did wrong. When all she did was obeyed her leader. All she did was be obedient to what Sarah asked her to do. But now it's my fault. <laughs> now I'm outside in the cold. I'm outside by the spring. I'm outside crying, trying to figure out what did I, where did I go wrong? Y'all. So she's now approached by the angel asking her, what are you crying about? Why are you even here? Oh, y'all ain't talking. Why, why are you here and not in the house with your, hand, with your, with your servant? And uh, I'm mean, sorry, not your servant, with your leaders, your uh, whatever you want to call them, Sarah and Abraham, what did they call them in that day? Why aren't you there serving them? Why are you out here? And why are you crying? Hagar's response is what, find, what many of us find ourselves doing, whether we realize it, whether we want to admit it, whether we want to come clean, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. She running away from the thing that hurt her. She running away from the thing that caused her pain. She running away. You think you can run away from it? Somebody say it's internal. 
so now Sarah had an internal conflict that now caused Hagar to have an internal conflict. But she ran away. She said, I'm running away from my mistress. And I'm running away from the thing that caused me pain. Remember now, her, min her mistress is the one who inflicted the pain. That was Sarah. She was the one who told her to go sleep with Abram. Hagar was only doing what she was instructed. And because she followed the orders given, she now finds that she is the object of someone else's pain. And that pain has now caused her to have pain. Y'all ain't talking. It's a cycle that's got to be broken. But thank God for angels. Somebody say, thank God for angels. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the presence of God. Thank God for being able to say, I don't understand it, but God, I need you to tell me what in the world is going on. I need you to explain to me what do I need to do to deal with this pain that I'm feeling. Angel says, can't deal with it running away. You can't deal with it continuing to hide it and cover it up. You got to go back and deal with it. I said she got to go back and deal with it. She got to go back and submit to Sarah. Can't run from it. You can't hide it. Can't cover it up. It's time to take the bandit off, open it up, and let it get some air only way it can get out is that it's out in the open the problem is we don't want nobody to see our ugly wounds so there I dare not let it be exposed in public or in church oh y'all ain't talking to me I dare not acknowledge the fact in church that I got a problem that listen some of this stuff that we dealing with happened years ago y'all ain't talking in my childhood listen i'm 56 but some stuff happened to me at 10. and if i didn't deal with it correctly it's gonna show up now that i'm 56. 46 years later i'm still dealing with a wound Still dealing with it. Didn't seek proper help. Didn't acknowledge what, what severity of my wound was. So I treated, I treat a level one wound. No, I treat a level three wound with a level one remedy. Level three is the, the most severe. But I treat it like it's a level one. Oh, y'all ain't talking. And a level one can't heal because the wound is so deep. The level one only tends to the surface. Oh, y'all. I still got to go, I still got to break through the skin and down to the flesh to get to the proper way of healing this wound. But I'm just putting ointment, neosporin on the top and covering it up with a band-aid. Ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna work. You gotta dig deep. You gotta go down in there. Listen, you gotta get, oh, Sister Collins, I'm so glad you're here today with your nursey self. So, so you've got to get some, some uh, what them little things is the doctors use in the operating room? Huh? No, not the gauze, the thing that cut us. The scalpels, yeah, 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 them things, them. Yeah, yeah, not the gauze, uh -huh. not the gauze. We, we beyond the gauze, we, we, we temporarily done stopped the bleeding now so that we can see the wound. Oh. While it's bleeding, you can't really see how deep it is. So we temporarily stopped the bleeding so that we can see the severity of the wound. 
But now that you know the severity of the wound, you need to, you need to identify what level it is so you can get the proper treatment. Somebody say deal with it. Bishop tell us all the time without confrontation, there can be no, no resolution. You can't resolve it if you don't confront it head on. The truth of the matter is we don't deal, if we don't deal with the bleeding and heal the wound, we'll continue to find ourselves dealing with things years later that happened years ago. The cause of the bleeding only took one night. Follow me in the spirit. The reason why you bleeding took one night. One wrong move. One night affair. Lord have mercy. I said a one night affair, but you're still bleeding. Years later. One case of rejection. One time somebody abandoned you. One case of abuse. Happened years ago. But here we are now 10, 20, 30, 40 years later. And we still bleeding. Maybe you thought the wound had healed. Because the bleeding had stopped. But then one day, you hit that wound. Here come the bleeding starting all over again. Y'all ain't talking to me. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Because you done took the band-aid off. You on your way. All of a sudden you hit that place that was wounded. And the blood started coming out again. Bleeding all over again. Bleeding all over again. Now you're going to put another band-aid on it. We've been band-aiding and band-aiding and band-aiding and intoxicating and smoking and drinking and sexing and doing everything we think we do trying to cover up the real problem. Tell somebody that ain't gonna work. You ought to know it by now. You ought to have all you already ought to already know that what I've been doing ain't fixing it. Cause it's still there. So the bleeding is not the issue. The bleeding is only an indication that there's a deeper problem. So how do we stop the bleeding, you say? You deal with it. You deal with the pain. You acknowledge that you're still hurt. You acknowledge that you're still wounded. You acknowledge what they did to you. You acknowledge the fact that yes, they did leave me. They abandoned me. They rejected me. They abused me. They did whatever. Whatever your, whatever your issue is, you got to acknowledge it. You can't just keep saying, yeah, it happened and go on about your life. You've got to acknowledge it from the depth of your soul. You've got to know that you know that you know that, yes, they did that to me. And that is one of the reasons why I am where I am today. Because it started a cycle. Lord, have mercy. I said it started a cycle in me. An internal conflict in me started a cycle of how I move, how I treat people, how I talk to people, what I do, why I do what I do, why I act the way I act. A cycle. But I want to say to you today, though the scripture says the angel told Hagar to go back and submit, I'm not saying that you got to go back nowhere to the person that abused you or molested you or reject. I'm not saying you got to go back to them. But what I am saying is go back to the place that it happened. Lord, go back to the year that it happened. Go back to it. And sometimes it's got to be real visual. You can't hide. You can't hide the fact that it happened. It's got to be a real visual experience and an encounter. 
that you're back now to the place where it started because if you don't go back to the place where it happened or the place that it started you're really not dealing with it so I was supposed to minister this last week but on the course of week before last or the last two weeks I had to go back to some places and it wasn't by my choice <laughs> that I went there something hit the wound that restarted the bleeding from years ago so I could have easily said they picking on me they this they that they whatever but in that moment the Lord began to tell me in the shower how I got this message Sabrina deal with it it's time to stop the bleeding and deal with the wound I was in the shower and I told I think I even told my husband and he said and I said I don't know yet all I know is that's what I heard and then this message become to be real a realization that there are some things in my life that I never really really dealt with Lord have mercy help me today God I got busy I got married I got children then after the children we working life problems you're dealing with <laughs> then you've got ministry mama sick daddy sick all of this stuff just started coming up but I realized that it was because I didn't deal with the first problem I didn't acknowledge the severity of the first wound so then it caused me it took me to a place I didn't want to go but it was in that place that I realized that I never dealt with it. I just covered it up. I just put a band-aid on it. And I kept living. I kept moving. I kept doing what was required. I kept doing what was asked of me. What I'm supposed to do as a wife and as a mother. I just kept moving. But I never dealt with it. So over the course of those three weeks, I was silent. And I allowed God to heal me. A lot of tears. A lot of nights I didn't sleep. But I dealt with it. Now I understand. Why it hurt so bad when it happened. But. I can honestly say today that I'm healed. Don't mean that the tears won't stop. Because I do. I miss my mama. I miss my sister. And sometimes you can feel like you're in the world all by yourself. And I got a husband that love me. Children that love me. Mother-in-law. All of you. But it still never helped me with the real issue I receive your love I do all of that but the real issue was my mama go not only did my mama leave me my best friend left me and then not only did my best friend leave me my hero left me so now I'm healing properly because I've acknowledged that they ain't coming back I've acknowledged that I've got to find what what I need somewhere else it's not that it's not it's not available to me it's just not coming from them y'all understand so you've got to acknowledge your pain your level of pain 
you've got to acknowledge where you need to receive the healing from that you need it may not come from the person that did it to you y'all y'all i said your healing may not come from the person that caused you the pain but you still gotta heal your responsibility is still that you heal time to heal for real it's time to forgive for real because real forgiveness comes with such a freedom real forgiveness come with such liberty you don't feel pressure you don't feel the pressure in your chest or the pressure in the wound you don't feel that pressure anymore when you acknowledge the fact and you forgive for real you understand real forgiveness comes with a liberty and a freedom sometimes we can think we're free but something happened and it caused you to feel that bondage again and today God want to free us from the bondages of the things that has caused us pain so we got to go back and deal with the real issue the woman with the issue of blood as I close in Luke chapter 8 had an issue 12 years very familiar story I ain't got to read all the scripture because y'all know the story for those that don't know she had an issue a blood issue hemorrhaging for 12 years she spent all of her money going to doctors trying to find out the real problem as to why she kept bleeding in her culture it caused her, have to, her to have to be isolated because in that culture her bleeding was um, uh, what you call it well, is, is, uh, she couldn't be around people she had to be isolated all right so not only oh, have mercy, is she got a bleeding problem now she got a bigger problem because now I feel rejected because I got to stay by myself. I, I can't go out in the crowd. I can't go out in the community and fellowship among everybody. I got to be isolated. So her bleeding is an issue. Now she feel rejected and abandoned. And anybody listen to me good with those type of issues find yourself in isolation that ain't a good place y'all hearing me it is not a good place for you to isolate when you have a severe wound because the enemy will fill your head up with all kind of lies it wasn't that the people didn't love her, didn't know her name, didn't know, you know, didn't think she was this or that. All they knew is we can't be around her because she unclean at this point. But the enemy would tell her something different. Oh. So, she spent all of her money. She went to all the doctors. They couldn't figure out what the problem was. So she stuck with her issue. But, somebody say but, here come Jesus. Jesus passing through. She heard about all that he had done. All the healings, all the deliverance, all the miracles. She heard about it. But guess what? Her hearing that Jesus came through caused a desperation to rise. She was desperate to be healed, for real. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her desperation caused her to come out of the comfort zone. It caused her to come out of hiding. It caused her to come out from where she was, isolation. It caused her to come out. And the scripture says she began to press through the crowd. She began to knock people over because she had a desperation. 12 years, I'm sick of this bleeding. 12 years, I'm tired of being isolated. 12 years, I'm sick of being where I am. I've got to get to Jesus. 
How desperate are you to be healed for real? So she pressed through the crowds. And the scripture says that she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? Let me tell you, there's a place you can go in Jesus. There's a place you can go and worship. There's a place you can go in your time, your private time, that you can touch him. Lord, have mercy. And he'll know it's you. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, God. I said, he'll know it's you that touched him. He'll begin to cry out, Deidre, you touched me. Sabrina, I feel your touch. Get up, daughter. Arise from that place and be made whole. Y'all, somebody in this room right now need to stand to your feet and begin to worship. You need to go ahead and worship in your place. Come on, in that place of your pain. You need to go ahead and release it now. Come on, put that thing on your mind. Yes, Lord, put that thing on your mind that's been causing you. Come on, to bleed all over the place. Put that thing on your mind that's been causing you. Come on, so much pain. You've been restricted over the years. You've been bound. Come on, you've been bound over the years. You've not been able to live full life over the years because you've been bound by your wounds and by your pain. But Jesus is passing through the room today. Yes, Lord. He's passing. He's passing through the room today to tend to your wounds. He's here to tend to that place, that place of brokenness, that place of barrenness, that place where you've been broken. Come on, that place where you've been bleeding, that place that you've been trying to hide and cover up. You've been putting a band-aid on it for all these years. But God said, take the bandage out today. Come on, that thing needs to be open. That thing needs to, need to have some air so that it can heal for real. heal for real but Jesus is here today and he came to tend to your womb but some of you may have gotten to the place where Bishop said all the time you don't got addicted to the pain you, you don't got so addicted to it that now you can't even acknowledge that you really have it But I came to pull the covers off today. I came to take the gauze off. I came to take the bandage off to help you acknowledge the fact that I still got a problem. I still got a wound. I still, every now and again, it's still bleeding. It's still bleeding out. It's still, come on, somebody oozing. There's a level of, of, of um, healing that I have not applied to the wound. There's a level of treatment that I have not applied to the wound. So if I don't apply the right thing, come on here y'all, if I don't apply it right I'll keep bleeding year after year after year. Don't just stop the bleeding. You got to heal the wound. And Jesus is here today to help you heal come on all hands lifted come on all hands lifted we're worshiping right there we're worshiping right there come on yes lord that's it Woo! some of these hands are lifted higher than i've ever seen them lifted before thank you lord i say some of your hands are lifted higher than i've ever seen them lifted before which is saying to you, Father, I really, right now, God, I really surrender. I'm really going to give it all to you because I'm really tired. I'm tired of having to go back and deal with this stuff. I'm tired of it resurfacing over and over again. I'm tired of it, come on, causing me to treat people the wrong way. I'm tired of it causing me to inflict pain on people that really don't have anything to do with my level of pain. It don't have anything to do with my wound. It wasn't them that did it, but I keep inflicting pain over and over and over again on the people that I love. Not no more. Somebody say today it ends. Yes, God. It's your In my lungs, I 
worship him right there come on it's in your worship it's in your personal time with the Lord yeah father do it for him today go up and down every aisle breathe on every person in the room and every person watching me live on Facebook and on YouTube let that be a visitation to them God, I even see the tears that are flowing from their eyes. God, I thank you that those are not tears of pity, but tears of healing. They're being healed right where they are. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm not going to ask you to stop the tears. I'm going to say, let the tears continue to flow. Let the tears be continue to flow. Because as they're flowing, you're healing. As they're flowing, God, you're healing them of their wounds. So, Father, we thank you for the tears. We thank you, Lord, that we're no longer covering it up with a band-aid. We're opening it up to you. We're naked before you. I said we're naked before you. We're unclothed, God. Yes, Lord. Deal with us where we are. Every person in the room, deal with our internal conflict. Deal with our wounds today, Father, that it don't keep showing up again and again and again Jesus we're touching your hymn now we're touching you now heal us that we may be made whole thank you Lord Jesus thank you Father thank you Jesus thank you Lord I don't think there need to even be an altar call the altar is in your heart altar is right where you are. I don't need to lay hands in this hour. Jesus is doing it. That's right, baby. It's done. It's already done. Whoa. I know it's painful to remember. I know it's painful for you to reflect. I know it's painful for you to go back to that place where it happened. But I decree and declare today that your pain and your desperation today is going to release a healing that you've been crying out for for years. So, Father, we thank you now. And we give you praise. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise today. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour. only to you because it's only you that can heal us it's only you that can deliver us it's only you that can come get us out of where we are so we pour ourselves out to you and we give you glory in Jesus name amen come on you can take your seat give him a hand clap I praise one more time pray that this message today was a blessing to you as it was to me. I'm ready to go forward now in the newness of who God is making us. We're ready to go forward now. I told somebody on this week that you can't impact somebody else's life if yours haven't been impacted by Jesus. 
there ought to be a testimony that you have of how he brought you out, how he healed you, how he dealt with you, how you encountered his presence, how you encountered him in a way you've never experienced before. When you do that, that's when our lives change and our testimonies become alive. It becomes life to somebody else. Can't be ashamed to tell it though. Many of us are ashamed to tell our testimony because we're still living in the embarrassment and the shame of it. So we've got to be free. We got to be free, right? So that we can impact somebody else's life with our testimony that their lives can be changed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Facebook and YouTube, for tuning in today. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And again, I pray that this message has impacted you in a way that your life will never be the same. Amen, amen, amen. Now, we want to give you an opportunity to sow. It is also our Super Seed Sunday. Well, come on, amen. Well, we sow 22 extra dollars. That is beyond our tithe and our offering. So we want to extend that also to our viewers today. You can give by way of Cash App, PayPal, or Givelify. Amen. If you're giving on any of our mobile apps, make sure you acknowledge whether it's tight offering or super C. Amen. Amen. So we can make an accurate count of your giving. I want to say on behalf of Bishop and myself and the entire CWM family that we love you and we appreciate you and we thank you for always stopping by the way. Amen. We'll see you back here on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. for our midweek power surge. Go with God and God will go with you. We love you. Bye-bye. Amen.